Welcome to the Mind Vine Podcast, where we challenge the stigma associated with mental illness through conversations about a variety of issues impacting mental health. Here we bring you news, views, and interviews that intrigue, educate, and celebrate recovery. Leading us on this journey are the hosts of the Mind Vine Podcast, Daryl Mathers and Chris Bovey. Welcome to the Mind Vine Podcast. My name is Daryl Mathers, and I'm with my co-host, Chris Bovey. Welcome. And we have a special guest uh, this morning at the Mental Health for All conference here uh, in Toronto as part of uh, kind of CMHA's big event this year. Uh, Yvonne Sullivan, uh, yoga uh, aficionado, also has, you also have your own personal uh, recovery story. And thanks for being here uh, Thank this you morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. So the thought of yoga terrifies me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not because it doesn't seem like a worthwhile uh, endeavor, but just the, you know, putting my body in places that I don't not sure I can recover from. But I thought that was your life story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But after reading, you know, a bit about what you do, it seems, you know, very much in line with uh, mental health and, and recovery. And I know you have a personal story. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do? Sure. Uh, just to start off once on your point, yoga is not necessarily just the physical postures. It's like a lifestyle. Um, so it's being okay with the moment. And then there are physical postures, so you're going to get the physical benefits. But then it translates into mental health benefits because of the way you're using your breath and moving your body. So it's, it's a whole lifestyle that can help you going forward for until you practice again, like stress relief, clarity. So it's, it's, it's a whole lifestyle. But my story starts, um, so I am a, I've always dealt with anxiety uh, my whole life. That was just a part of my thing, uh, like pa- panics and as well as general anxiety. And I was never really, I didn't know what was wrong at first and then I did know what was wrong, but I didn't know how to teach or how to treat it. And I started using alcohol, uh, which was okay for a time period until obviously alcohol is addictive and I, I'm a recovered alcoholic and, uh, or I'm a person, sorry, a person in long-term recovery. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right. Sorry, I'm saying the proper language. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so next month I'll have five years sober. Wow. But what I really noticed when I was about two years sober is that I was not participating in life and society properly. Like my anxiety had never been dealt with. And I, I do believe in a holistic approach to recovery and wellness, meaning that, you know, I went to therapy, I tried medications, I did, I did a lot of different things. Like I believe everyone has their own path and you have to use all the resources you can, or at least I did at that point to find my right path. And so I went to support groups, I did everything I should. And then about two years sober, you know, my life, things were happening. It was, it was chaotic. And I, I, I just went into a like severe depression and one of my uh, friends and I'd been reading online, like I'd always educate myself online. Both of my parents were teachers. <laughs> so yeah. anytime I was like stuck inside from my agoraphobia, <laughs> I'd just like read online about what was wrong. And so I was like, I'm going to try this yoga thing, like whatever. I've tried everything else. And gradually, like I'd feel okay for that hour. And this is going from like severe depression and panic attacks to like feeling okay for an hour. And then gradually it would be like an hour and 15 minutes after the class. And then it would be a couple hours. And then this is from doing it maybe three times a week. And then finally I just felt okay all the time. And it's a process, like it wasn't all of a sudden, but I was able to not overreact to things. My body felt better, like there wasn't areas in my body that was all stressed, it was starting to even out. I could breathe properly and yeah, since then it's been um, it's been amazing. Like I'm basically yeah. dedicating myself to this. There are a lot of people who unfortunately don't have the resources to access necessarily yoga or aren't aware of it Mm -hmm. so I just try to speak about my recovery my journey and to let people know there's many ways to recover and yoga I believe has saved my life wow so would you say that in doing the yoga where anxiety like the more panic the more you things speed up yoga helps slow things down allow you to process things better yeah so your breath is a huge thing so that's a big part of it a lot of people a lot of adults at least are only breathing to just like their uh, ribs or their chest and you have a natural stress response system in you and that's your breath and if you 
breathe deeper all the way to the belly. Like it calms your nervous system, um, slows the mind. Mm. So that has been great for my, like I still have anxiety, like there's no, most people do, but maybe mine's a little bit more easily triggered, but now I'll know to breathe. And so that as well as, now I forgot the original question. No, I was just oh. saying that the power of being able to slow and process yeah. and breathe and, and, and analyze things. So how did it? How did you go from being a yoga, you know, someone that did yoga to actually being an instructor? Where, where did that, how long ago did that sort of transform? Um, so I think I was practicing yoga for about a year, and then I started taking my yoga teacher training. Okay. Uh, and then I went to Costa Rica with Recovery 2.0 and Tommy Rosen. Okay. Um, so that was about 65 people in recovery who have all used yoga um, as a tool. And that really helped me in the sense that I realized there was a lot of people kind of doing what I was doing and kind of motivating me to keep going on that path. And then since then, I've taken uh, yoga for 12-step recovery. So it combines uh, a yoga practice with a 12-step discussion. Mm-hmm which is really great. And there is for any addiction or anyone affected by addiction. So people bring their daughters, people bring their brothers. Like it's, it's really, it's, it just touches my heart to see this like open community of people wanting to heal together mm. and using healthy self-care mm. tactics. Um, and then I've also taken additional trainings for anxiety, depression. So that's kind of my journey now oh. uh, where I'm at. You're, you're based in London, Ontario. Um, but who do you work with? Uh, we were talking earlier, it sounds like you work with a bunch of different groups, uh, like kind of a diverse collection of people. Right. So I am based in London. I'm in Toronto for events and conferences. Uh, they're all either directly related to mental health, health care, or recovery. Uh, so I'll come and I'll share as a person with lived experience and then teach a class like I am now at the <laughs> <laughs> conference tonight, uh, today. And... Uh, I'm an independent person, so I I'll work with different organizations as well as my own, or as well as running my own or facilitating my own community groups. Mm-hmm. So UWO, I've done some work with them. Um, Mission Services of London. What else? A little bit with Fanshawe College. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of just go all over the place. Last week we had Recovery Week in London, so it's Recovery Month. That's why I'm wearing the oh, silver oh, nice. ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and London has a whole week for it, so I was part of the planning committee. So there was a bunch of events. There was a yoga event, which was was great. So obviously I was the instructor. <laughs> so people just came out to celebrate recovery and and talk about it out loud. So we know that you know there there is still a huge stigma, but talking about it and seeing people all come together and almost like celebrate recovery. Like obviously there is a the other side of it, which is. Um, heartbreaking but um it's good that we come together when when there is successful recovery or to show that for people still struggling right we've talked a lot about peer support and the power of peer support have you found um delivering yoga because you have lived experience do you find that the the people you're teaching have a a comfort level in going through that process because of your experiences i would definitely say yes like i have a lot of people that reach out to me and say you know Either I've met them somewhere in the community and talked to addiction about them or talked to addiction about maybe one of their family members or they've seen online. They'll say, you know, like, I, I'm not sure. I think I might be uh, having a problem with whatever. And th- they maybe haven't done yoga before. Or they might be coming out of treatment. Mm-hmm. And they'll, they're just looking for something to help improve their lives. And I think, yeah, putting like a face. Uh, I th- I'm a pretty compassionate person. And I've been through what they've been through, so that for sure, at least if, if I put myself back in their shoes, like I would have loved to go to a recovery yoga class when I first mm. started out. Mm. I didn't, I just went to regular ones, but mm. for sure, yeah. yeah. It sounds like, you know, for you, yoga was like transform, it transformed your life, if not saved your life. And now you're, uh, you know, you're helping people you're on the other end and you're trying to help others who are in your shoes and what's that like or did you think like five years ago that you'd ever be in a position where not only are as yoga's helped you now you're helping others um that's a really good question like i it's like my heart and my soul uh it's i still face my own struggles but when i wake up in the morning i know that there's a greater purpose to my life and there's a greater purpose for me to get out of bed because people depend on me 
uh, in a way that I am very grateful for. Uh, so that's, yeah. And this, today you were up early at this conference, uh, getting people out of bed uh, mm -hmm. and getting them participating. And trying to get in myself out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> but so you run like you you this week you're running uh, yoga as part of the a part of the part of the conference. So what kind of uh, the people who are coming down are they uh, seasoned yoga professionals or yoga participants or are some people trying it for the first time? There's what? been a couple of people who are trying for the first time and then a few regular mm -hmm. practitioners. Most of my classes that's the case. Like I, like I said I would have people coming out new to recovery who've never tried it before and then there's the regular ones, but I'm able to adjust. Like I really try to make people feel comfortable and offer modifications and I'll even come over and talk to people because it's a different, uh, I believe it's a little bit different level of instruction. Uh, there is, there's people coming into the class who've dealt with trauma um, or do have concurrent disorders like myself and I'm aware of those things and I know how to properly not trigger anyone. So. As far as the classes here, it's 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 wide range a little bit as well as my community classes. Mm. Great. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. It was really interesting, and I really appreciate you. you sharing your personal story because we've heard a lot of that this week, and we we do a lot of that at our, at our hospital back in Whitby. But it's there's nothing more powerful than when people actually share their own experience. So thank you very much for so doing that. Thank Maybe you. you tell us a little bit about. How can people connect with you if they're interested in, in some of the programs or services you provide? Sure. Probably the best way is my website, www.evonnesullivan.com -E or my email address, info at evonnesullivan.com. Um, so I do events. I'm also a human resource professional. So once in a while, I'll do workplace wellness or mindfulness uh, workshops. And as well as just general teaching, I, I'll, I'll come in and do a special uh yoga class based on recovery or speak like that so right. anything pretty much if you have questions about yoga and recovery shoot me hit me up we may we'll say it. that we, so may, we, may need, <laughs> we may need a private because it might change how you feel about yoga if you try to work with us yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyways right. thank, you, thank you very much thank you so much